A number of different panels have been trying to work out what went wrong at Fukushima Daiichi on March 11, 2011. Experts appointed by Japan's Diet are the latest to release the results of their investigation. Their more than 600-page report outlines the failures the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company made before, during, and after an earthquake and tsunami disabled the nuclear plant. Panel Chair Kiyoshi Kurokawa handed the report to the Speaker of the Diet's lower house and the President of the upper house. He and his fellow experts met 20 times since last December. Their report analyzes the underlying causes of the accident. It says that both the government and TEPCO missed opportunities to develop basic safety requirements. That's why they call the Fukushima accident a man-made disaster. The panel says the tsunami should not be considered as the only factor, and the impact of the earthquake on the facility should also be taken into account. TEPCO blamed only the tsunami in its investigation. The report emphasizes that TEPCO failed to give staff at Fukushima Daiichi enough training to take proper countermeasures in the event of a disaster. The panel also failed, or also notes, rather, that the role of TEPCO and the government had not been clearly defined should a serious accident occur. It says this led to the failure to contain the situation. The report also looks at Japan's nuclear power industry. It strongly condemns TEPCO for using its dominant position to loosen regulations. It also criticizes the utility for refusing to disclose information even after the disaster. The panel says workers at Japan's nuclear regulatory agencies were no better. It evaluates their level of expertise as poor. It says the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency and the Nuclear Commission or Safety Commission didn't maintain independence from pro-nuclear government bodies and didn't prioritize public safety. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has spent the day reading through the report. Mitsuko, you have read the things in detail, the, the script in detail. This diet-appointed panel says that Fukushima Daiichi accident clearly was a man-made disaster. How did right. members come to that conclusion? Mm -hmm. Well, they argue collusion between the government, TEPCO, and nuclear regulators mm -hmm. caused the accident. They point out all three groups showed a lack of governance. And they say they failed to correctly develop the most basic safety requirements, for example, assessing the probability of damage and developing evacuation plans. They say the disaster could have and should have foreseen and prevented. The report criticized then Prime Minister Naoto Kan and his office, saying their actions actually got in the way of efforts to respond to the disaster. Can you give us an example of what they did wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, the report says communication between Kan's office, TEPCO, and nuclear regulators was unimaginably disorganized. They didn't use technology that would have enabled them to talk in real time. And the experts say the lack of communication caused the Prime Minister's Prime Minister to fly to Fukushima Daiichi to check on the emergency response, but they point out that this unprecedented and direct intervention took away the attention and time of on-site staff and confused the chain of command. The panel says this delayed the disaster prevention process. Now the report isn't just critical of politicians and regulators. Uh, panel chair points a finger at out of all things, Japanese culture. Now, what sort of things did it say about right. that? Right. Well, actually, panel chair Kiyoshi Kurokawa says Fukushima Daiichi was a made-in-Japan disaster. He says the fundamental causes are ingrained in Japanese culture. He cites reflexive obedience, a reluctance to uh, question authority, a devotion to sticking with the program, and groupism. Well, Kurokawa says each and every Japanese citizen should reflect deeply on what really happened on March 11, 2011, to understand what really went wrong, and to make sure similar mistakes aren't repeated. This diet-appointed panel is made up of scientists and lawyers. What else can you tell about its members? Well, the panel included a citizen from the town that hosts Fukushima Daiichi. Beiko Hajisuka and her neighbors had to flee the accident. More than a year later, they still can't go home. She represented the tens and th of thousands of evacuees during the investigation. I felt we were left out by government and TEPCO officials as they worked disorderly. 
without giving enough attention to us evacuees. Lawmakers should realize each proposal we suggested in the report. Okay, Reiko Hachiska just said those proposals. What, what are they? Mm -hmm. Well, panel members included seven proposals in their report. Mm. And they say the Diet members should set a th third party team to continue investigating the accident. They say they could define, they couldn't define how the accident developed into a more serious situation after the earthquake and tsunami hit the plant. They say time is needed to closely check pipes and indicators in the reactor buildings and containment vessels. Other proposals include revising nuclear regulations and the government's crisis control system. An executive of Japan's ruling party has suggested the government may not be able to achieve its decontamination goal for areas near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. He hinted that the government may need to review its target. Liberal Democratic Party Secretary General Shigeru Ishiba cited a report submitted last month by the International Atomic Energy Agency to the Japanese government. The report said the international standard for radiation exposure ranges between 1 and 20 millisieverts per year. The Japanese government has set a goal of 1 millisievert per year for areas surrounding the plant. The report says that target cannot be achieved quickly through decontamination efforts alone. It calls for government officials to make that clear to people living near the plant. Ishiba said the Japanese government should carefully analyze the team's recommendations and study decontamination standards in other countries. It's not desirable for people affected by the situation to be without the prospect or hope of change. He said the government and the LDP should hold a serious debate over how to improve the situation. And a frightening prediction that an entire nation could go the way of the dinosaurs. Japanese researchers saying decades of declining birth rates could cause their own people to become theoretically extinct. David Piper is live in the region. Hi, Martha. Yes, it's a bit of a doomsday scenario. Basically, these researchers in Sendai, this is a, a city that was uh, devastated by the tsunami, they looked at the numbers and they said in a millennium time, if the numbers don't change, there won't be any Japanese people left. The last baby will bo be born in about 3013. Uh, serious consequences for Japan, and it's having an impact already with the falling birth rate. One Japanese company said they're selling more adult diapers than uh, baby diapers now, and also serious consequences according to some people because they suggest that Japan will perhaps spend more money on health care than on defense in the future which could have implications for the US alliance Martha Wow that is fascinating David I mean you know one can sort of figure out what the problem is but what are they saying why are they saying this is happening It's a complicated problem. There's many reasons out there, but uh, perhaps the main reason seems the Japanese people, the young people, have fallen out of love. Something like 60% uh, of Japanese men under 60 were surveyed, and they didn't even have a girlfriend. And uh, a lot of young Japanese women seem to be, according to other surveys, not interested in sex. So they need to change that. They're pumping money at families to have children. But at this time, unless they change it dramatically, the Japanese population, will cut by about a third in about 50 years time, Martha. You're going to have to rush a big shipment of oysters to Japan, I think. Anything they can think of. David, thank you very much. Yeah, look out, fire, pardon me, fire, fire, look out, pardon me, fire. Yeah. Yeah. We never practiced that one, do we? Panicking, we never practiced panicking. We practiced going out neatly. Pardon me, fire, look out, pardon me, fire, fire, yes, pardon me, fire. We never do that. I don't know why we practice so much. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been struggling to stop contaminated water from leaking into the ocean. They have a new plan for a wall in a tunnel underneath the complex to try to stop the radioactive flow. Highly contaminated water is flowing into a maze of underground utility tunnels. Engineers suspect that water is mixing with groundwater and leaking into the ocean. In April, workers with the Tokyo Electric Power Company started to create a wall of ice between the basement of the number two reactor building and the tunnel. They installed pipes to carry coolants. 
but by July the water had yet to freeze. So workers added more than 400 tons of ice and dry ice. They say this helped freeze over 90% of the tunnel cross-section. They report obstacles prevented them from installing coolant pipes everywhere. TEPCO officials say they want to fill gaps in the ice with materials such as cement. Nuclear regulators say they'll decide whether to approve the plan. First, they want to assess the effectiveness of using filler material in tests conducted by TEPCO. A separate project is now underway at the plant to freeze soil and create a wall of ice around the four reactor buildings. It is aimed at blocking groundwater from flowing into damaged reactor buildings and becoming tainted. But a delay in efforts to build the wall in the tunnels could hold up that project as well. That's because the ice wall and the tunnels will intersect at some points. Plant that's upstream and the groundwater. Yeah. So it is like, it's like a hole. It's, it's a boat with a hole in it, and you have to keep on building bigger and bigger pumps with deeper wells and bigger wells. And really, that's 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 the tack. That's the, that's the main tack for preventing more contaminated runoff from reaching the ocean around it and also the air. Now remember, NHK just uh, came out with NHK is a um, is a uh, Japanese news outlet that right. many studies are showing this is from simplyinfo.org that uh, they're showing that that cores, multiple cores uh, parts of it or some or, or even most of it have been ejected from from the plane. We thought that too, once you've reached containment that was one of my big concerns, well, where did the core go and after an explosion like that whether it be steam or, hydro, or, or hydrogen explosion or a combination of both so it got I, I always say the term, it got sneezed out all over the place. I mean, it's totally, you know, it, it's, it's a yeah. huge mess. And, you know, yeah. You know. yeah, you're talking about like the MOX reactor. There's actually three steps to what happened there. The first is they have superheated steam from the uh, the special fuel bundle arrays that actually create tertiated superheated water. Now, the second is it compresses the corium, so you get, a, a, especially when you get unstable plutonium isotopes, because they're making MOX reactor pellets uh, for nuclear weapons, because it was an illegal facility. Uh, and MOX is very, very touchy. So they ended up with an induced uh, criticality from the hydrogen explosions that later created a critical, literally small nuclear explosion. So there were particles and chunks of these fuel rod assembly bundles that were identified as far as 65 to 75 kilometers away. And they're probably a smaller particles that were carried two or 300 kilometers. So there have been estimates by scientists that there's a ring of at least 300 miles where fairly large particle... Uh, uh, plutonium and other highly dangerous isotope pellets actually made it all the way to south and north and in every direction 300 kilometers at least. Which is why the Ronald Reagan, when these things happened, they're getting sprayed with not only nanoparticles but larger particles as well of very highly radioactive material, especially from reactor 3. And all three reactors completely lost containment. They're now kind of saying that, hey, yeah, we, we lost containment completely. And by the way, one of the most dangerous things, it wasn't just the tsunami cutting out the power backup systems, it was the earthquake. So reactor number one lost containment of the reactor core with the earthquake alone. And there was also some damage to some of the, uh, the cooling pools of other reactors like an OI that occurred right as the, reactor, as the reactors of these other reactor sites were hit. So it's not just Fukushima that's in danger. If they have major other quakes, which by the way because of the release of plasma inducing effects of geotectonics, there's been a 500 percent increase and level five earthquakes are higher in Japan, and uh, you know, and if astrophysicists want to come combat and challenge me on this, that volcanism and earthquakes are geotectonic events, uh, and there's a change in the level of, of particles in space, in the solar system or galaxy, depending on the area that you're transiting through in the solar system or the galaxy, the galactic arm, and that changes the rate of volcanism because you change the plasma effects of the atmosphere, and as you release radioisotopes. You increase the transit of energy, so you increase the risk of having more geotectonic or volcanic events. So we're going to see a lot more bad stuff, in other words, on the Ring of Fire. Well, Dr. Bill, you know, even Weather.com yesterday also was talking about off the coast of Japan is a island that's being formed by volcanism, and what they're worried about there is a collapse of the, of, I guess it's the ash dome, and creating another tsunami that way. Now this one is 600 miles 
uh, south of Tokyo. But even still, you know, it, it, the, the way yeah, you're talking about going on. It's like a light, giant rock mushroom made of volcanic magma that's hardened in the ocean. And as it falls, it generates a giant tsunami wave. And that, yeah, by the way, that's, that's how most tsunamis have been made over geological history. Executives from the utility that runs Japan's damaged nuclear plant have heard a familiar request from some of the people who hold stakes in their firm. Shareholders for Tokyo Electric Power Company have spoken up at an annual general meeting. They've demanded TEPCO get out of the nuclear energy business now. More than 300 investors called on TEPCO to dismantle all its nuclear facilities. The company owns and operates Fukushima Daiichi. All I want to ask is that they dismantle the nuclear plants. We can't ensure their safety. TEPCO executives said the company has now recorded the loss for three consecutive years. They've had to compensate people affected by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. They say the rising price of fuel has hurt their bottom line too. TEPCO executives told shareholders they have no plans to dismantle all nuclear facilities. They said nuclear energy is essential for a stable supply of electricity. Kevin, anything you'd like to add at this time? I would just encourage folks to jump into these fights. These decisions will affect all future generations. Every ton of high-level radioactive waste that's generated is a curse on all future generations and they're making 20 tons per year at each reactor. We've got to stop it because once it's made, we've got to figure out how to keep it out of the environment forevermore into the future and that is a, a curse to lay upon future generations.